Hello and welcome to another wonderful Sunday experience, right? Today's message is tied to transformations from process to progress. And our base scripture is taken from the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. I'll be considering the first 10 verses of that book. Join me as we enjoy the word of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. And I was hearing one of our papa, one of our fathers, saying that you are missing a lot if you are not yet part of the elders forum so i want to encourage every one of us amen <laughs> uh, you didn't get what i'm saying Abby. i want to encourage every one of us to join <laughs> amen the lord will get us there in jesus name please can we celebrate our elders one more time what a wonderful time in one's life to get to that level. I believe it is the prayer of all of us to join them when the time comes. And I pray that our time will come. And as they are growing, this is the promise of God for them. The Bible says that even in your old age, you will do what? You will bear fruit. My prayer for you is that you will bear fruit in your old age in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says you will be fat and flourishing even in your old age. That is the promise of God for you. It will come to pass in Jesus' name. I celebrate the grace of God and his mercy over our lives. And I want to appreciate our Father in the Lord my Father and the Lord, for the privilege to bring the word of life. I pray that the Spirit of God himself will speak to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, you know, I'm just trusting God that this morning I will be able to capture things that the Lord has placed in my mind as we share together. Let's pray together. Father, we ask that at this moment, you will speak your word to us in the name of Jesus Christ. We are begging you that your spirit will interpret your word to our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask, Holy Spirit, that through me, as a vessel to your people, you will interpret your word. You will transform our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. For a very brief charge this morning, is titled Transformations from Process to Progress. Transformations from Process to Progress. During the Seeker's Breakthrough, this last Wednesday, we were helped of the Lord to share together one of what I call the analogical prophecies in the Bible. It is all about the story of the dry bones. We know the story. In an open valley, I observe in my scriptures that most times, when God wants to speak to his prophets, he uses analogies, like I said on Wednesday. You will permit me to share one of them this morning. Out of the analogies that we have read about is the story of Hosea and Goma. For God to tell a prophet to go and marry a prostitute and he took her in. You know? And the scripture says that he went into her and they gave birth to children. One after the other. Every birth she gave to a child, she will go out to her lifestyle of promiscuity. And God was using that to portray a message to the nation Israel. The same thing he did in Isaiah chapter 5. 
when God was about to prophesy about his expectation to the nation Israel. Isaiah, he gave him a song. He said, sing about my well-beloved who has a, a farmland on a fertile hill. And God was expecting, after preparing the field, that the fertile land will produce fruit, but it was producing wild grapes. And so many analogies in the scriptures, part of which I want us to study today. And I want us to bring ourselves to the picture that you see as you are seated. God is not yet done with you. I had a man of God who presently is 80 years above. He said the Lord told him when he was 80 that I have just started with you. So I begin to wonder if the Lord has just started with somebody who is 80 years old, what about those of us that are looking up unto them? Eh? So, elders, this is the word of God for you. The Lord has just started with you. I, I thought you would say a better amen. The Lord has just started with you in the name of Jesus. And so, don't begin to look at it that eh, I am 80, I am 90. The Lord has just started with you. So, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18 and verse 1, started this way. It is another analogy that God is bringing to our mind this morning. Jeremiah, chapter 18 and verse 1. The Bible says, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, verse 2, verse 2, Arise! Go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my, my words. I was expecting Jeremiah to raise a question there. Must I go to the potter's house before you speak to me? At least we are friends and this is a friendship relationship. You have been speaking to me before now. But you see, for you to operate in the prophetic, out of many other virtues that I learned, there are three virtues. Number one, humility. Number two, obedience. And then number three, faith. Where I came from, Baptist Mission Schools, there's what they call HOF, Abby, Head of Finance. But this time around, it is humility. What? Obedience and faith. So I saw Jeremiah saying, well, as far as it is the word of God, I will humble myself. And as far as it is from God that I should go to the potter's house, I will obey. And then, since he said it's going to cause me to hear something, I will receive with what? Faith. So I saw Jeremiah the prophet going down to the potter's house immediately. He arose. He went down to the potter's house. And you see, as Jeremiah got to the potter's house, he met the potter at the wheel, making a vessel. Oh, look at me, everybody. Every one of us are still on the process of making. He was making a vessel. And I saw Jeremiah sitting carefully. Let me see what God is about to show me. I see God turning the eyes of Jeremiah to his ears and turning his ears to his what? His eyes. He saw the potter making something at the wheel with the clay in his hands. And as he was making, I want us to note this, that it got to a point what the potter was making was mild in his hands. I was checking the word mild as King James Version, NIV Version, and then New King James will present it in other version. The message version of the word mild says, 
it turned out what? Bad. Excuse me. I don't know the situation you are facing. I don't know how bad it is. But this is what God told me to announce to you. That in the name of Jesus, it will turn out good. You are not saying amen here. Whatever bad situation you are passing through. Whatever experience that is not pleasant. I announce it. It will turn out to be your testimony. I checked another version. Uh, I think the revised standard version. And it's, it used the word spoiled. So, the maker was making it. And it got spoiled. In a sense. Eh, I don't know how many of us remember when we were children. When rain falls, we will go to a mud. And then we will use our legs to do what? To build a house. And then we begin to arrange it. And if care is not taken, if you remove your leg, what will happen? The something will fall down. And then you make another one firm. You see, God is making something great in your life. This is our year of transformations. And that is what God is saying. It may not look like it now. It may look like everything is not okay. The Greek word for the word mild, spoiled, or turning to something bad. The Greek word for it, the meaning of it is this. It is, it is turning to become ruined. For some, for a situation, for something, for a life. Not to be okay, to be ruined. Uh, but I want us to also note this, that as the maker, the potter was making it. Though it got spoiled, it got mild in a sense. The maker made it again. Another vessel that is best not for the clay. Best, not even for the wish of Jeremiah, but best for him to make it. So, anything that God wants to make out of your life is something best for him. Permit me to use this illustration. That between the promise of God and the fulfillment of his promise... In between it, there is a process of making. As you journey through the promise, and as you are walking, every day releasing your life to God, God is making something better, something new out of your life. And you see, if one can endure that moment, mm, even you will celebrate and men will celebrate with you. You know the reason? You are not the person making yourself. And the maker knows the best thing he's making out of your life. So I saw the maker making it. And Jeremiah looks, look, looking closely to it. And the summary of the story was that, you see, as he saw that, God spoke to him in verse 5 and verse 6. And God said, this is the message I'm bringing. This is the message I'm bringing. Then, the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 6. Verse 6. O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? I want you to fix your name there. God is saying to you, as he's also saying to me, Oh what? Oh Ezekiel, I, can wonder, I don't know about you, but oh what? Oh, Ezekiel, I can one day. Can I not do to you? God is making something beautiful. And you know, when you listen to an analogy, you will want an interpretation. So, num number one, who is this potter? God. Abby? God is the potter. And if he is the potter, there are other names you can call the potter. Number one, Genesis chapter 1, 
verse 26 and 27. And God said, let us make man. So, another name for the potter is the maker. Another name for the potter is the creator. What other name do we have for potter? For, for a potter? Eh? A molder. Eh? He's molding something. There is a song like that. He's turning around for me. Abby? Something like that. God is turning something new around for me. He's molding things out of my life. He is the potter. What other name do we have for the potter? Eh? We have the producer. Those that are musicians will be able to explain that better. Before you will be able to produce something. You see, this song they sang today, it took them hours of what? Of rehearsals. Before you, combat, before you produce something, you will sit with it. So, don't be in haste because God is making something out of your life. Have you had me tap someone by your side? It's like you are too, you are, tap someone by your side and tell the person God is producing something good in your life. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, what other name do we have for a potter? Apart from a producer, we have a processor. He's processing something. The other day, I was using it as an example. I, you know, I was not fasting, but I didn't eat since morning. And as I was coming back home, my wife was preparing something. So as I approached the kitchen, or I entered the sitting room, approached the kitchen, I perceived something. And I said, mm, yes. Ah, this, this, this madam is at it again. Ah, ah, this is wonderful. Hello? That thing that God is producing out of your life, when you perceive it, you will be satisfied yourself. Eh? So, you see, as a potter, we also have another name for a potter. What other name do we have for a potter? A manufacturer. Another name, a, uh, if he's a manufacturer, he's automatically the what? The owner. But can you imagine Clay's saying to the potter that no, 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 no. That's not what I want you to make. I want you to make another thing you make Apart from this, the potter is making something good. And you, the clay, are questioning the making process of the potter. Uh -huh. So, I want us to note that if God is the potter, the hand of the potter is strong enough to produce, I mean, to protect, the hand of the potter is enough, strong, to process and it is productive enough to produce. Whatever he makes out of your life is the best. He can make something out of nothing. God can make what? Something out of nothing. That is the process of transformation. Okay then, who then is the clay? The clay is the creature or the creator, I mean the created, of the potter who is ready and willing to do, to submit himself for the following. Number one, the clay is available to submit himself for molding. Molding. Eh? Jeremiah got there and he saw the potter molding the clay. A version would say he molded it to become like a pot. It is, he is the person that knows the best thing that he desires to make out of your life. You don't question him. The clay is also available aside molding is available for making. I told you it's a making process. The process of making. The clay is also available. Aside making, it's also available for shaping. Shaping. God is shaping something best to him out of your life. 
the clay is available for production. So you are to release yourself to God. You know, I love that song, and that's my song. It says, Mofayati Ifemifun. Abi? I am releasing my all to him. Whatever he wants to make out of me, let, his, let him make it. The clay is also available for breaking. It's available for melting. It's available for molding, for doing, so, so for marrying. It's available. It's available. It's available. So, what are the things that we need to learn in the relationship between the two? Both the clay. Since we have known that the potter is the maker and the clay, you and I, what are the things we need to learn from their relationship? I wrote five things down, and I'm going to quickly mention it because of our time. The first one is that the potter works at the wheel to make something better than the best out of the clay. You know, I, I observe that most times when God is making, we don't release ourselves for better than the best. We settle for the good. And there's something after the good. What's the, what's the next thing? The best. I mean, better. Thank you. And after better, there's what? The best. But we even settle for the best. While God is making something better than the best. And for you and for me, if we are patient enough to release ourselves, the best is coming our way in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, the clay should not have an authority over the maker and what the maker is making out of him. Some of us are suggesting for God eh, at this stage, this is what I want you to do for me. At that stage, this is what I want you to do for me. But when it comes to your relationship with your maker, eh, eh, you release all to him. You don't have authority over your life. Number three, number three, aside that the potter knows the best and is making something better than the best out of the clay. If on condition. If and when the clay is willing. So God is waiting for your willingness. If he wants to make the best out of you and you are still keeping to yourself, he's waiting for you. And then number four, what other lesson can we learn? While the clay is in the hand of the potter, the process determines the progress. You see, as God is making it, eh, he's processing something good. He wants you also to submit yourself entirely. And number five, number five, it is the potter that determines both the what? The process and if the day, it, it is the, the, the potter that determines the process of making. If the clay makes itself available because the clay is, because the clay is, is a work in progress. Can you help me tell someone by your side? You are a work in progress. So. And so it's okay that say you are a work in progress. The best of you has not come. You are a work in what? In progress. God is making something. Out of your life. Something good. Something better than the best. And, but if God will make that, there is also some things that the clay will need to do. As I stop, there's something that the clay will need to do. Number one, what do you need to do? Number one, make yourselves available. Isaiah chapter 6, after the Bible says the king Uzziah died, he saw the Lord and he went through those processes and at the end, God said, who shall I send? And who will go for us? And Isaiah said, 
Yeah, yeah. So he's not looking for your competency because before him you can't be competent. What God is looking for is your what? Your willingness. Your availability. Submit to him. Number two, aside that, God is also willing that you align yourself to his will. Align yourself, not about you, but about the potter. He's, he's actually desiring that you say, as far as it is your will, let it be. You remember the story. Jesus was praying in the garden of Gethsemane. And what happened? He said, if it is your will, let this cup pass me by. But if, uh, Father, not your will, but let, not my will, let your will be done. What other thing is God expecting? He's expecting alliance. He's expecting a kind of friendship relationship. As you receive instruction from him, you follow suit. Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 8 is desiring that you connect with him. The Bible says, but now, O Lord, you are our father and we are the clay and you are the potter and all we are the work of what? Of submit to him. Let him make you. Let him make you. Uh, number four. Number four is Allegiance. I remember a song like that. I pledge allegiance to the land with all my strength. He wants you to do like this. Eh? He wants you to submit. He's just emphasizing almost the same thing. Number five, God desires that you amend your ways too. Agai chapter 1, verse 5 and verse 7. Consider your ways. Ah, consider your ways. It is the desire of God to make something good out of your life. If you are willing, if you are willing to submit to him, God desires something best for you, but don't keep to yourself. Just open to him. I want to stop with a passage. Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 9. Romans, chapter 9, verse 20 to 21. Hear what the word of God says. But indeed, O man, who are you to reply against God? Will the things form? Say to him who formed it, why have you made me like this? <laughs> you see, there are some people like that, oh. They are saying to God, why are you making this out of me? Why can't you make something what? Better. And verse 21, does not the potter have power over the clay. Amen. Two people were fighting. One day. As I stopped. And the first person said. You don't know who I am. If you know me. You will not stand before me. The other person said. I, well, I know you. You don't know me. You can't be talking before me like that. The other person said, who are you? Who are you? Are you not the person standing before? He, he said, it's because you don't know me. If you know, you will not be talking like this. And the other person answered, I know you. He said, okay, who am I? You are just a dust. Amen? You are just a what? A dust. But you see, this is where I'm going now. If you submit to God who you are as a dust, what will happen? It will make something good, something better, something best. In fact, 
better than the best out of your lives. You are just a what? Okay, okay, preach to someone by your side. Say you are just a dust. But if you submit to God, he's ready to make something good out of your life. Can you please rise on your feet? I want you to talk to God. There's a song that says, God, I give you my life. I give you my... I live... God, something like that, yes? I give you my soul. I live for you. I want you to sing that song passionately. Lord, One more time. Lord, I give you. Lord, I give you my heart. Make something good out of my life. Talk to God this moment, Father. I release my all to you. Make me something better than the best. Make something better than the best out of my life. I release my all. I submit to your will. If you are there, you are not giving your life to Christ, you have the privilege to do so as you start the journey of the process of making. If you are there, you are not giving your life to Christ. Your right hand on your chest and God bless you. I want you to say this after me. My Lord Jesus, I ask that you will come into my heart. I desire that you will make me according to your will, not according to my desire. Thank you, Father. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Everyone, can we place our right hand on our chest and just whisper to the Lord, Father, I release my all to you. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Father, this is our desire. This morning, we pray that you will accept us just the way we are as we release ourselves to you and you will make something good, better, best, and better than the best out of our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. Wow, wow, what a word. I believe we are blessed by that message. And I know that we have learned, as our pastor has explained, that God is the potter and we are the clear and must be ready and available for more. I believe you have learned one or two things from this powerful message that we have learned. And I hope that you put this into practice in your day to day activities as you continue in this week. I know you have been blessed. Join us next week Sunday for another exclusive tiny presence of God. God bless you.